Oh, run, John, 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 John. Yeah, it's you. Oh, it, it's hammering. It's hammering. Stay on. Oh, pretty bow, dude. Fish on guys, fish on. Could be a little perch. Nope, it's a nice rainbow. Yeah, buddy. Here we go, nice little rainbow pinned right in the corner of the mouth. That's what's nice about jaw jackers and snappers. No issue right there. That's probably the one of the one year olds. Actually, probably maybe a two year old, just a small one. Going right back in, right there. Welcome to Second Ice, folks. I'm Josh from Bennett Fishing, and today we're gonna go over the most deadly technique for catching stock trout. Now, New Hampshire has a program where they stock a bunch of brood stock, which is their spawning brook trout and rainbow trout and even brown trout. The ones that are completely spawned out, they're done being in their pen, and they stock them right either underneath the ice or they stock them right before ice. And I know a lot, like up in Canada does that. Um, a lot of other states do that. It's fantastic. It's great for first ice. We're standing on about two and a half inches to three inches of black ice with snow on top. And this is the most effective way. Now you can use tip ups with shiners. The problem with that is they get gut hooked quite a bit. And so what we're using is an automatic fisherman snapper, which is the cheaper equivalent to a jaw jacker. Now these are two brand names. There's other ones out here. This is the, this like I said, this is the Automatic Fisherman. This thing is super rugged and it will, the trigger mechanism does not freeze unlike the jaw jacker. And I'll show you what I'm using for rod. I'm using a Ugly Stick GX2. This is the USG X ICE 28 medium. So it's the 28 inch medium rod. I'm running a 1000 size series circle tackle reel, which I'll leave a link for all of this stuff below. And it's kind of like a set it and forget it kind of thing. So it uses the action of the rod to set the hook into the fish's mouth. I'm running eight pound test right now. Um, my cousin over there, John, is using anywhere using anywhere from four to six to eight. Uh, we use the same setup for lake trout on, uh, on our bigger lakes. And we're just using a, a little tiny hook with a little egg. And I'll show you the egg here in a minute. The jar of eggs that I'm using. And so this, these particular ones float. So we want to make sure our, our ice hole is clear. And if yours, my hook is a little heavy. So mine's kind of just suspending and you want the least amount of junk in the water. So my cousin, cousin just got one. He's using jaw jackers over there. And so we're going to just put this down like this, bend the rod over. And we're gonna set it just like that. We wanna pull that line tight. So when they hit it, it goes tight immediately. That's one advantage of having a split shot on there. But I'm out of split shot. And you wanna run split shot. I'm not familiar with the BB sizes. I don't, I only do this early ice. Uh, the BB needs to be, you know, small, yay big or something like that. Uh, it's about anywhere between six to 12 inches above that hook. My, uh, my cousin Woods and Weeds Outdoors, he's got a YouTube channel. I'll leave a link for it right here and below. Um, he was just fishing somewhere else and caught a couple of brookies. So we're going to try to catch some more rainbows. Let's go. Some also that don't float. Oh, okay. Oh, it was small last time. It stayed on there. Stole my egg, son of a gun. That one? Yeah. He's right on it. Eh? 
It's cool because you can see where the like the sun's coming through the hole and the ice is. Yes. Didn't I tell you that one was just gonna go off, guys? Almost. Oh, he's off. Dang it. It's just, I was saying it was cool to see him on live scope and then have it go off right after. Yeah, there's a couple springs. Oh, no one. Got one, got one, got one, got one, got one, got one. Got one. That's a bigger one. That's a bigger one for sure, guys. Stay on there. Stay on there. Pretty fish, super pretty. Barely hooked, but nice little rainbow. Like, definitely interesting color pattern. Definitely. Hold them out to the camera, make them look huge. Come back in. And uh, get that, get this set back up and uh, Go back in there and dig. It might be just an egg dead stick kind of bite today. I don't know. I mean, trout just love the eggs as it is. They can't help themselves. Nice. Two fish. Swinging so a miss on a couple other ones. I do have varying types of hooks on my snappers. Yeah, me too. Which is not the best. It'd be better to have thin wire, probably an eight size hook. I don't know, maybe a six. Yeah, kind of all over the place. We also use the same setups for uh, for big Lakers, so seems to be working. Now, a couple of things that you do need to know is we're allowed six lines here in New Hampshire, so I have actually five lines out and I'm jigging in the shack. I'm trying to sight fish, which is really complicated. And then he's got uh, another five jaw jackers out, kind of set up the same way with different color eggs, some that float, some that don't float. We're also set up in very shallow water, um, anywhere between anywhere between two feet and probably six feet of water. And if you wanna see, I'll show you guys some live scope footage here in a minute of these fish kind of swirling around here, but we have literally, I'll show you drone footage here in a second of our layout. Um, some areas are better than others. We're kind of set up off the point in this direction. That is not safe ice over there. We think it's not safe ice. Otherwise you'd be over there, it looks a little bit better. But uh, that's why we're over here. I'll show you the live scope of these fish kind of cruising around. So I'm gonna fire up the live scope. Hopefully there's, hopefully there's some fish bouncing around. We also have his uh, active target over there. And we're actually going for rainbows today. So each individual species, we have three here in New Hampshire. We do have some hybrids. We used to have hybrids, we don't anymore. Uh, so browns tend to be suspended in the water column. Uh, if you're in 16 feet of water, they tend to be at eight or anywhere between eight and up. Rainbows tend to be like right in the middle of the water column um, in that same aspect right now where we're kind of like seeing them. Uh, we're in, I think, six to seven feet of water where I am right now. And they'll come in about two feet above bottom. And sometimes they'll, call right, they'll be right underneath the ice if they're smelt eater. So it depends on the forage as well. Brook trout are usually hugged right to shore. They're cruising shorelines, they're pinning smelt and stuff like that against the shoreline. So you wanna be up on shore um, in, in any sort of transition area. So we don't have a lot of sand in this spot, in this lake, but if there was sand or a beach kind of, we'd be cruising right on that area and set up jaw jackers and snappers. So I'm gonna try to show you any fish that are swimming around here. You got one fish that's cruising right behind me, right there. Little tiny speck. So he's cruising right next to shore. And they'll cruise weed lines, they'll cruise rock and sand transitions. They'll also cruise right in the middle. Uh, we've seen them on live scope just suspended and no bait around, no nothing. So they're also stock fish. So they're, they've been in here about a month, about a month, month and a half. 
And so they're getting used to their forage in the area and they love eggs. So, oh, I forgot to show you guys the eggs. These, recommended by John over there, are Gulp Alive Berkeley Fishing. And these are the floating salmon eggs. Now, like I said, there's a bunch of different varieties. There's pots, these eggs. It's all different sorts of stuff. You gotta make sure you, you check your regulations uh, to make sure you're using the right stuff. But the floating ones in orange seem to work, seem to work really, really well. Because I'm beating John like five to one, maybe two now. I got a bunch more, so. Oh, you got one. Which one? Oh, for this one's hammering. For this one's hammering, guys. Hammering, hammering, hammering. Yeah, that one's pretty good. Oh yeah, that's a nice fish. That's a nice fish. Come on, stay on. Stay on. Oh, pretty bow, dude. Pretty, pretty fish. Yeah. <laughs> That's the size we're looking for right there, folks. Nice chrome. Nice chrome. Oh, yeah, super chromed up. Nice, pretty fish. Nice, nice, nice. Going back in. Yeah, that fish was absolutely hammering that little tiny rod. And I'll, uh... Hey, Paul, you want to just set up? What did you just set up? <laughs> oh, he's off. Is he off? Is he on there still? Oh, he's off. Oh. <laughs> Well, that's because I I need one of your hooks. I put I put this one on a tungsten. And then, oh, you it's yours. We got a little flurry, guys. We got a little flurry going on. And I got one more tip for you guys. We're lucky that we have snow on the ice that dampens our footsteps. One, the two have actually taken off my cleats because they tend to scratch the ice and make noise. The more you move around, the less fish you will catch, unless they're lake trout. Lake trout like the noise. So the longer we, him and I stay still, the more fish we catch. It's just one of those things that you can see them spook on live scope. Uh, they also don't like the live scope power right in their face. So uh, I've been turning mine on and off just to kind of like find fish and see where they are and I've been moving stuff around. Don't be scared to have a jaw jacker or a snapper sitting in a spot for half an hour and not get hit. Move it somewhere else, move it even further away from you just because you're talking. Talking really doesn't matter that much, uh, but walking around and creaking on the ice, especially when it's this thin, matters a bunch. So I'm missing a split shot on this one because I'm out for the ice fishing season already. The fish keep hitting this and not getting like actual hooked by it. They'll like hit it once and get bounced off. So what I'm doing is I'm putting a piece of ice on the line and that allows them to take it just a little bit longer, inhale a little bit more before the rod goes snap. Now the other thing I can do is change the tension uh, on the jaw jacker just a little bit more. They also make a little bobber that goes in here to take up that slack, now especially if you're using a big piece of uh, live bait like a big shiner or something like that. It allows them to inhale it a little bit more before they take off with it. Oh. Ron, John, 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 John. Yeah, it's you. Oh, it's, it's hammering. It's hammering. I know the instant I said we were going to leave. He's still on there. That small one, though. Small one. Yeah. Nice. The long just skinny. Cool. As soon as you say you're gonna leave, folks, that's what happens. <laughs> that never, one might have been yellow, because those two I know were orange. Never fails. <laughs> the wiggler. There you go. Oh, come on. <laughs> All right, the bite has kind of slowed down. It's noon time, and that kind of is what happens. If we stayed until like the little afternoon lull around two o'clock, I'm sure the bite would pick back up, but I just missed another one, and 
and showed you that little ice trick. Uh, but I want to know in the comments, are you guys snapper guys or automatic or snapper automatic fishermen guys or girls, or are you jaw jacker folks? Uh, let me know in the comments or are you just strictly tip ups. That's fine. I don't like tip ups. I like fighting fish on the rod. I've had, uh, it's just the way I learned this way first and then learned how to use tip ups. So uh, let me know in the comments below. And if you want to learn more about ice fishing stuff or just see the gigantic playlist I have of ice fishing, you can either click here or click here and I'll see you on one of those next videos.